Run's house saved us because it was like it was the it was the '86 Raising Hell Run DMC, but we still wasn't advanced as ad, as ad, as we still wasn't as advanced as Kane, Cool G Rap, and Rakim. But the, the the Run's house record had that Run DMC untouchable energy, like. Kane and them could have been from the future, and we could have been from 1968, but what Run's, Run's House represented, sound, feel, delivery, and presence, and ego could make everybody bow still. But they didn't care about that because we had did it already. But they, res they respected us for Run's House. And when Run said, whose house? They're going to say Run's House. But it wasn't his fucking castle anymore. So Beast of the Rhyme came out. Nobody really paid attention to it except... As we were speaking earlier, the DJs. Right. Oh, all the D, Pete Rock, all y'all, all the D, Scratch, yo, this is bananas. But see, the critics and the current um, commercial atmosphere, they're not checking for how dynamic and real hip hop Beast of the Rhyme was. So it took Beast of the Rhyme like a whole nother year before people started giving respect to it. We when we first had a when we first had an interview, uh, you talked about just uh, evolution of hip hop and evolution yeah. of hip hop lyrically, uh, and how Run DMC, you know, if someone I think you were saying if mm. if if artists are doing color red, color red, color red, Run and DMC is doing color blue. Right, uh, exactly. I have the quote. Uh, and when journalists talk about tougher than leather, they talk about uh, a couple of things. They say that it's a little more sample based uh, production and Lyrically, it's a little more complex, and the flow is different. So, at that time of writing the album for the album well, "Tough and Leather," was right. that your thinking going in? I mean, no, nah, no, no, that was running them thinking. Because if you if you look at see, it's funny if you look at Run's career, he evolved to whatever you know. What I'm saying when it was trying to be like treaching him, he's going to be like treaching him, right? You know, what I'm saying my thing was. Without having to change my, um, without having to change my flow, I would always fit in. I just changed my attitude. Right. You know, if you if you if you after raising hell, tougher than leather, back from hell. Yeah, those were our last two recorded now. But when you look at tougher than leather and back from hell, and you look at what Run was doing vocally and lyrically. He was slipping and ripping and ripping in if that was he was doing it. My thing, my thing was to okay, you the new dudes doing that. I'm a I'ma go backwards. I'm gonna go I would say my thing was if I'm coming out 79 in 84, that shit is new because it's not it had never been done. Right. Like the greatest period of hip hop is a period the period of hip hop before rappers are like. It was very lyrical. Kaz was lyrical as a mother. Yeah. Mel was lyrical. I got a tape with Melly Mel rhyming. A Melly Mel, y'all. Not broken glass. You know, Mel yeah. is known for Beach Street. Melly Mel in, in, in Scorpio before Scorpio was Scorpio when he was Mr. Ness. Melly Mel was rhyming with an echo chamber over Aerosmith's Walk This Way. With an echo, a Melly Mel, y'all, y'all rock well, y'all, y'all from the top of the world to the depths of hell. A Mel like that, not the Mel we know. Right, right. The great Kumo D, can you find an MC better than me? Mo D, can you find an MC better than me? No, can you find an MC who can say he's better than Special K? No, can you find an MC who can rhyme up against LA Sunshine? No, you can't, you can't. And these your sort, you got to come with. See, I'm, I'm, I'm going back to. Oh, these dudes is going 88 and 89. I'm going to go back to 78. Because nobody lyrically was doing what, what Soul Sonic and, and them was doing. You listen to Soul Sonic. For, Planet Rock's a perfect example. Planet Rock is better than 99% of all of hip-hop music in the last 10 years. Soul Sonic Force, Mr. Biggs, Pow Wow, and MC Globy. M Look at that flow right there. Right. How you going to call that dated? Old school wasn't the time period. So for me, when we was doing Tough and Leather, what my establishment and conglomerate was doing, they was trying to be relevant. Mm -hmm. Instead of just going in there, when we put out our first album, we were just trying to be creative. We were just trying to fit in with metal 
and Mo. We was trying to Furious Five, Cold Crush, Treacherous Three. So we trying to fit in with them. You know what I'm saying? We want to fit in so bad that, okay, everybody's doing, uh, and, th and this is what made Run DMC win. Everybody's rapping over James Brown. Everybody's rapping over disco. Everybody's rapping over funk. Everybody's rapping over jazz. Yo, let's just make a record that's just beat me and Run Ramen. So we did Sucker MCs. Changed the game. When it's time for making an album, everybody's rapping over jazz and James Brown, Parliament Funkadelic. Yo, let's do a rock song. See, it was all, it was all, um, sincere. It wasn't like, we're going to do rock rap. See, Walk This Way isn't the first rock rap record. The first rock rap record is Rock Box, which was the first rap video on MTV. Right. Why? Because it was so unique. But it wasn't like, we're going to sit down and we're going to create rock rap and watch what happens. I was just like, yo, nobody's... Because I love I love Billy Squire's Big Beat. I loved um, We Will Rock You by Queen. And I loved... The, I didn't even know it was called Walk This Way. The album with the toys on it, Jay, and play number four. I just love... Dip, ba -doom, doom, dip, when that guitar came in, then, and then, yeah. there was something about rock that was harder than R&B and funk. So at every level, Run DMC... We did the 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 simple. I mean, people always say simple is always better. It's the simple yeah. things that change the world, not the complex. So, like you were saying, Run and Jay was getting very complex. Why? Because Premier, Pete Rock, Dre, um 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 um, um KG, um 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 Q Tip and Ali Shahid. These dudes were sample. Like these dudes were wizard when it came to sample. So running Jay to, to be relevant, to compete, to get on a charge, to get on the radio, we gotta do what everybody else is doing. When our energy came from doing the complete opposite of what everybody was doing. And still getting on the charts. And still exactly. You know what I'm saying? So Tougher Than Leather was one of those things where, you know, I call it Michael Jackson syndrome. I would have sat Michael Jackson down and I said, Yo, to Michael, let me tell you something. You sold 40 million Thriller albums. Shut the hell up. You'll probably never do that again. Tommy Matola ain't the devil and there's no conspiracy. Just get out there on the road and be Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's all I... Yeah, man, you, you, you sold 40 million. You'll probably never do that again. I will never, ever probably do Raising Hell again. You think I care? Because I did it already. So now just get out there and do what you do. That success of that proves that you and your own, you can do that for life. You know what I'm saying? But it comes that thing where when you start competing against everybody else, you destroy yourself. Mm. So, I mean, what was that? Was there a discussion between you three when that was happening? When you were like, we should do, you, we, you guys want to do A, but we should really do B. No, nah, what had happened with Tougher the Level was this. We finished Raising Hell, and then Jay comes and says, yo, Davey DMX is going to work with me. Right. And then Jay had these other producers that he was around. Yo, they got beats for us. So we respecting Jay. Cool. Let's do it. So, I mean, <laughs> outside of beats in the rhyme, uh, outside of beats to the rhyme in um, Run's house, I artistically, I wasn't present on those other records. Mm -hmm. Missy Lane and all right. of the, like, Racked. I like, the people always say, D, what records would you not, what records are, are you not 100% in on? Or did you, I start naming it, go, oh, yeah, that's right. The, what right. I felt, the world felt, because the world was expecting, okay, you expect the Run's House and the Beast to rhyme from us, but you expect that run, like, Perfect example is the Beastie Boys. They was able to evolve, but they was able to be evolved as Beastie Boys. Like when everything had changed out of nowhere, they dropped intergalactic planetary, <laughs> but they were still the Beasties on it. Don't do the, the sonically a change, but they still were the Beastie. We, we were trying to change our whole molecular DNA thing. So for come, coming into the album was this. Dave and Jay came up with this track. Um, Dave and Jay, so it was one of those things. You know what I'm saying? Um, Run's House was really... Um, Run's House won because it was like, yo, because Run would come out and start the show. Whose house? After he gave his little speech and we go on the show. So Run was like, yo, I want to make that a record. Let's, be, let's make that the hook. So that was easy. So 
You know, at first I was going to come into Run's house and talk about, I'm in Run's room, this and that, this and that. But then I said, no, nah, okay, it's Run's fucking house, but y'all, I'm coming to fucking make tear shit down. I'm, I'm coming, I'm in the house, y'all, and this is how DMC turned in. I'm trying to separate myself from Run's house. So it worked, because Run was Run, and you know, he's, he's the man. He wants to be seen, and my shit is, I'm just getting in and wrecking shit, and I'm going back home. Right. So those two records work, but the whole... The whole um, thing was, okay, we're working with Davey DMX now. What you excited about that? Yeah, of course. But it's more of now um, Jay is trying to fit me and run into this new thing instead of it should have been let's see where these guys is at and then let's make the music to that. So now they was already met, knew what they was doing. So I'm just coming and dropping my lyrics. Or now I'm coming in, I'm coming in with a hundred other ideas, and then they're showing me Missy Lane, and I gotta push all my stuff to the side and write right. to what they're doing. And that's that's that was the writing process with um Tough and Leather, which was different. The first three albums, we just came in, turned the beats on, and run did run, I did me, and then when Jay put it all together. Now it's like, this is what we're doing, guys. So this is what the you know what I wrote that I want to I want to come and subliminally because I love him too much come at Kane rock him and Kooji rap all at once without them knowing because I love them and I smile in their faces there but they're killing me so I'm I'm coming with stuff like that and running Jay say nah dude we don't need to do that mm. and I'm like okay I'm pushing that to the side and going to flow so of course it's it's not going to have that um that uh, the, uh, the first three albums had. Hey, my thing was come turn the beat on. I wasn't even supposed to be on Sucker MCs. That's why Run Run had the record itself called Sucker MCs. But then Run saw, man, this goddamn C O D just go in there and put a rhyme. So I was like, I don't know what to do. You he said, Don't worry about my Jet Run was like, Don't worry about my song Sucker MCs. Just say your newest rhyme. And at the time was my newest rhyme was a rhyme I wrote because I just got accepted at St. John's University. And he said, put that one down. I put that one down, it becomes one of the most classic lyrics in hip hop ever. Mm -hmm. So Tuffin and Leather, we wasn't doing that. Tuffin and Leather now, this is what's going on now. This is what me and Dave came up with. So here's what we want you to do instead of what do you here you go? What do you want to do to this? 